So the human-to-human -human transmission is ongoing today, but certainly not, uh, not at the same level uh, as it was several months ago. So the, the epidemic looks like it's slowing down, which means that we still should keep attention to it until it's completely snuffed out. Uh, recovery, uh, the rehabilitation of the marketplace, uh, of the communities, that is uh, a, an area that of course needs uh, investment, uh, encouragement, uh, inputs from the outside world to help these three countries and certainly the rural communities get back on their feet and hopefully build back better. We have been quite involved in the community outreach, uh, taking the, the messages from UNICEF or the World Health Organization, WHO, out to the rural areas in communities that trust us after decades of working with them, uh, not only in animal health or animal production, but also the forestry people or the agronomists or the, or, or, or the, or the, the fisheries people, to take that message to the, to the forgotten or neglected communities. I think that's a very important work that we have done. I think there's a lot more work to, that needs to be done to prevent this from ever happening again. And that is where very much uh, my staff or people that work uh, within the Animal Health Service do have a role to play, uh, not only for these three uh, countries, mostly affected by the Ebola uh, epidemic of 2013-2014 uh, and now 2015, but in other parts of Sub-Saharan Africa where we know Ebola viruses circulate so how could we have better systems of early warning or risk mitigation? Uh, what, are, what is the role of uh, bush meat or wildlife in the spillover events that occurred to understand that a little bit better? And that's more of a research question, but it's research that demands answers today and that we won't come in the next outbreak and say, well, how come we don't have these answers? So the work has to be done now, not only in, in West Africa, but it could be Central Africa or Eastern Africa.